Today I want to look at percent composition calculations and something called the empirical formula. To begin with, I want to take you through a little bit of a map of the skills we hope to cover. We want to take it let's something called the percentage composition, which refers to the mass of the component over the mass of the substance. And that could, component could be an element, it could also be a compound. Labels of fertilizer often list the elements that are present in the sample. Percentage composition can be obtained through knowledge of the chemical formula. So we'll look at that way of calculating the percentage composition given a substance's formula. But we're also going to take a look at the reverse direction, where we can take a percent composition and determine a chemical formula. Now a little bit here about the type of chemical formula you can determine this way. There's both something called the molecular formula and an empirical formula. A molecular formula reflects the actual number of atoms that are present in the substance, whereas an empirical formula is but a simplest ratio. In this method, we can only obtain the empirical formula. Here's a quick lesson on the difference between the two. For instance, if we consider the water molecule, H2O, it consists of two hydrogens and one oxygen. Even at its simplest terms, it's still H2O. But consider, for you would, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. The actual molecule contains two oxygens and two hydrogens. If I consider though the empirical formula, which is the simplest ratio, it would just be HO, one of each. Similarly, if we consider the molecule glucose, C6H12O6, in its simplest terms, it would just be CH2O. So this percent composition will only allow us to arrive at what's called the empirical formula. We'll also in this lesson take a look at how one can take experimental data and from that obtain either a percentage composition or a chemical formula. So let's begin with determining the percent composition from a formula. There's the definition of our percent composition. And I would like to know the percentage composition of this compound, iron 2-sulfate heptahydrate, hepta standing for seven water molecules attached to it. So this particular substance has in it the elements iron, sulfur, oxygen, and hydrogen. And I want to determine what the percentage is by mass of each of these. I begin by setting up a little bit of a chart where I take a look at each element individually. I'm going to consider that I have one mole of this substance. And in it, there would be one mole of iron atoms. One mole of sulfur atoms. 14 moles of hydrogen. Remember, 7H2O would give me the 14. And the oxygens, I have to sum those. There's four present in the sulfate part and seven present in the water part, giving me 11. I total those up and I get the molar mass of my compound, 278 grams per mole. Now to get the percent of iron, I put the mass of iron over the molar mass and I get about 20.09%. I do that similarly for each of the elements sulfur, then hydrogen. And lastly, for oxygen, I could do it, but I could also just take 100% and subtract the various components from it and arrive at 63.32%. My calculations by and large here have four significant digits in them, simply because most of the given information has four. I want to do a second part to this question. I want to determine the percent of water that's present in this compound. To do so, I would need to know the mass of the water and the mass of the substance. Well, the mass of water is seven water molecules, each water molecule having a molar mass of 18, and the molar mass of the substance doesn't change. It's still 278. So it's 45.36% water. So this then was taken from a percent composition from a formula. Let's look at going the other way. Here I'm given a percentage composition, and I'd like to, from that, determine the empirical formula. To do so, I begin considering each element, much like in the other case. I assume I have 100 grams of the substance, and therefore I know the mass of each substance. I want to take that information that's in mass and convert it to moles. So I, beginning with the molar mass of nitrogen, I perform the calculation that the number of moles is the mass over the molar mass, and I get the 2.498 moles. Similarly, I do the same for hydrogen using hydrogen's molar mass and oxygen's molar mass. Now I want to establish what the ratio is between these three elements. To do that, I take the lowest one and divide it into them all. So the 2.498 is the lowest, and I divide it into all of the others, and I arrive at the following ratio. 
From close inspection, this is very close to one to two to one and a half. Now you can't have one and a half atoms. So what I'm going to do here is double this entire line. So I get a two, four to three ratio. Those are whole numbers when you would expect whole atoms. Hence, my final molecular formula, or I should say empirical formula here, would have two nitrogens, four hydrogens, and three oxygens in it. Let's take a look at how we can get percent composition now from an experiment. In my experiment here, I'm going to start with a crucible, and placed in that crucible will be some iron. I then add heat to the iron by means perhaps of a Bunsen burner. Oxygen then from the air will combine with that iron, and it will then produce iron oxide. I'll record some of the weighings here down below. The mass of the iron before the experiment was 1.79 grams, and the mass of the iron oxide that formed after was 2.56. The difference between these two masses would correspond to the mass of oxygen. So if I would like to know what the percent is of iron, I put the mass of iron over the mass of my substance, which I can see here from the data, and I get 69.9%. The percent of oxygen I could get by subtracting 100, or just doing a similar calculation using the 0.77 grams of oxygen. Let's look at also obtaining a formula from an experiment. In this one, I'm going to try to determine what the number of water molecules there are associated with a hydrate. Iron sulfate hydrate can have seven water molecules to it, but it also has others. I'll see what I have in this case. I begin with a similar apparatus, and into that crucible, I place what's called the hydrate, the chemical with the water attached to it. Upon heating, I can drive the water out of that substance, leaving behind the dry or the anhydrous form, meaning without water. My weighings, the mass of the hydrated substance, remember that's the substance with the water, was 1.83. After the experiment's over, I'm left with the dry substance. That's lost the water, and it weighs 1.35. The difference between the two, then, would be the mass of water. To determine the formula that this substance has, I just consider the two parts of the substance, the dry part, the part that's without water, and the water portion. Their masses are recorded here. I look up the molar mass of the dry part of the chemical, and from that calculate the number of moles of the dry part of the chemical. Similarly, I determine the number of moles of water using the molar mass of water, which is 18. Much like in the other method, I take the lower of the two and divide it into them both. That gives me a ratio of 1 to 3. And as a result, my formula then is iron sulfate with three water molecules attached to it. Thanks for watching. Comments are always welcome.